And what became really obvious is that all of us are basically on the same page in almost all the components. But there's one area that will be challenging. <laughs> for me, for Leo, for Elena, it's one of our biggest priorities to have the whole year between like 20 and 30 degree. And my dad and his wife, they want snow. <laughs> Yesterday we've been to Changu. I intended to film a, a full vlog, but there was no, somehow no time in the day to record like a, like anything out of which I could do a video. Just some short snippets. First, we went to the bank to finish opening the local bank account. Wow. That was a two-hour session at the bank, <laughs> but successful. I now have an Indonesian bank account. Beautiful. Feel uh, one step closer to being a local. <laughs> Good. Isn't it? Then I did a short stop at my favorite store to buy two new shirts, which is always nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've been to the beach. We played at the beach a lot. A lot. That was a lot of fun. We played a lot of football with the local. The yeah. Local peeps. Uh. Yeah, that was really nice. Yeah, wine. Oh, yeah. All right, Papa. we're looking quite wild. Been oh. to the beach, couldn't oh. film because Leo was naked all the time. Oh. Oh. But we had a beautiful day at the beach, oh. and now Leo wants to order some wine. Oh. You want to order some wine, huh? Yeah. But we don't order wine. <laughs> Maybe oh. we can get a carrot cake instead. Oh. And then we went back home, and today we again woke up to the most beautiful sunrise. Really, 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 really nice. And the first thing this morning is, of course, a dip into the river. Yesterday, hmm. I had, an, uh, had a really great call with um, with my dad and with Annie, his wife, and we were continuing our exploration of the ideal place where the whole family can live together. And <coughs> we were ta we were taking a, an inventory of the different needs. Everybody prepared their essential needs and ranked them in priority one, two, and three. And then yesterday we had a look where they overlap and where they are different. And 
and what became really obvious is that all of us are basically on the same page in almost all the components like we were we are all looking for nature we are all looking for quietude we're all looking to have a beautiful food forest garden growing our own delicious fruits and veggies and really yeah living a life that is immersed immersed with the in the earth that was really beautiful and at the same time like we're all looking for proximity to of course to other people we want to have community there we want to have like the possibility to connect with the outside world too um, yeah river waterfall mountain animals natural buildings clean air clean water these are all like buzzwords that were present in almost each in almost each one of our <coughs> like preparations of needs but there's one area that will be challenging <laughs> and that is that for for me for Leo for Elena it's one of our biggest priorities to have the whole year between like 20 and 30 degree in order to be able to walk barefoot in order to be able for the children to be naked as much as possible to run around and to be to be independent from an early age like right now when we are doing something and Leo is like okay I want to explore on my own he can, he can just go out something that would not be possible if we would be living in, in a colder climate where he needs to get dressed first and puts on a jacket and whatever and he's not able to do that yet so he's not independent he always needs us to go with him where he wants to go and I sense that this is not suitable with our maximum thriving and my dad and his wife they want snow <laughs> not all the time but a part of the year they want snow and these two needs are like impossible to overlap so we are currently exploring what that means and how to move forward whether there will be potentially two homes or like let's see let's see what what will come on the swing beautiful <laughs> swing in the wind mm. beautiful culture calls let's elaborate a little bit further on the question why I sense that living in the tropics where the temperature is whole year round between 20 and 30 degrees is uh, is the way to go because for us it's not only important to bring all our needs together but as well have a look at other stakeholders that are important for example future community members that will join our community or retreat participants that will come there for a couple of weeks or for a couple of months and make a transformational journey or two other stakeholders that are very important to us that are currently not represented by a person but that depend on us taking them into consideration to our the earth as a whole and the upcoming seven generations to really do something that is that is in alignment with the thriving of, of future future generations and for these two stakeholders they basically have one need they basically ask us to do one thing to live on an ecological footprint that is as low as possible to consume as little as possible from all the resources that are available and to live a life that puts minimal burden on the biosphere. If you're not familiar with the concept of the ecological footprint, this is the calculator that asks you a couple of questions regarding to your lifestyle, your consumption, your habits, 
like your consumption of animal products, how much of your food is um, locally grown, unpackaged, unprocessed, which is one of the major reasons for living in the tropics because that's totally doable all year round. Then what kind of house do you live in? What's the material with? Another plus for the tropics, straw, bamboo, sustainable materials like that where it's not getting cold are so much easier than in the colder climates. How many people live in your household? Electricity and so on and so on. And then in the end, you receive a result how many earths it would need to sustain your lifestyle. But even in my fictitious example of the community living in the tropics, not really traveling, growing all their food by themselves and so on and so on, even then we would need 1.4 earths if everybody lived like this. And then I did the test again with somebody being super environmentally conscious but living in a colder climate and this person needing almost double that amount, 2.6 Earths. And that's caused by many factors, like you need a bigger house if you live in a colder climate, because in winter you need space to live in, while in the tropics you can live outside, you don't need a big house. And if we put this into consideration too, then living in the tropics for me personally gets even more inviting. Because the thing is, yeah, sure, I could live a nice life, somewhere in the Austrian mountains where in the sun, summer it's like nice and in the winter it's like very cold and I still want to have my nice my nice nice breakfast and my full fridge with imported stuff from all over the planet because like yeah in winter nothing is growing there and you're, you could you, if you want to live a lifestyle that is on a ecological footprint as low as possible yeah store some potatoes and try some dry some bacon and store some legumes and then you basically have it. You eat that all winter. Do you want to do that? Probably not. You want something fresh. You want some nice fruits and, and veggies, but they're not available there. And if you still consume them, like the banana from Costa Rica or whatever, then living on an ecological footprint of one or lower is almost impossible because your whole fruit gets imported from all over the planet, which is something that I don't want to support. So that's one of the reasons why living in the tropics for me aligns like all the needs, aligns the children's needs, aligns like the adults' needs too. I really enjoy being, being barefoot all the time and having a minimalistic wardrobe and not needing to put on so many clothes. I really enjoy that. And at the same time, I sense that our thriving and the thriving of the whole alliance in a place like this and no i'm not arguing that this is the right place to live for like eight billion people on this planet like something like that is probably not feasible so i'm not here to say what should be the right thing for each and every person on this planet i have no fucking idea i can only make the decisions for me and for my family in a way that feels most aligned and this is to live in the tropics if it's the right thing for everybody or if it's even like doable I have no idea but I can do a little step for myself and make this decision in a way where I sense the most alignment with my values and the most alignment with our thriving and the thriving of the whole and when I put all these things into consideration it seems to me that this is impossible in the colder climate either Leo is suffering or I'm suffering or the planet as a whole is suffering or yeah 